Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. Today I wanted to introduce a new series on my channel. I was out shopping the other day and I saw a single medium-sized tomato with a price tag of nearly $3 and a head of cauliflower of over $10. Here in Canada, the economic times have led to sharp increases in the cost of produce. With an estimated 10% of most household budgets going towards food, a sharp increase in the cost of produce can have a real impact on our day-to-day -day lives. This is the reason I wanted to start this series that I'm calling the Urban Gardening Series. I want to explore and show you that backyards, patios, and windowsills can provide nutritious food. Critical to this series is the fact that it does not have to cost a lot. In fact, I want to be able to show you in this series that it can also help alleviate some of the stress on your household budget. The Urban Gardening Series is by no means a new concept. During World War I and II, a program called Victory Gardens took off. The Victory Gardens program saw front yards and public spaces converted into food producing gardens to help take the pressure off of commercial agriculture that was struggling to keep up with the wartime demands. In this series, I will take you along on a step-by-step -step journey through starting your first garden, planting, harvesting, and fertilizing, among many other subjects. I understand that some of you may have a hard time believing that you could save money gardening in your backyard. I mean, just take a look at all the different products including composts, fertilizers, and tools that are marketed to gardeners, and it may become hard to believe that one could produce a tomato for less than $3 and a head of cauliflower for less than 10 Through this series, I'm very sure that I'll be able to show you how to grow produce for less than it costs at the store. In fact, one of my goals of this series is to show you that the money that you invest getting your garden started will pay you back in produce within a year or two. Now that I've outlined what I want to achieve in the Urban Gardening series, let's start now. I'll be working with a single mother who can not only do with a little bit of relief on her food budget, but her daughter can really benefit from learning where her food comes from. I'm standing in my garden in the middle of winter, and I know what many of you are thinking. What can I do this time of year if I don't already have a garden? Well, what you can do is you can start planning. Planning will really help you get ahead of the curve and give you many opportunities to not only save money, but make sure that your first growing season is a success. The first thing that I do every year is a little bit of research. I'm just trying to figure out what types of crops that I want to grow in my garden. This will help figure out what type of garden that you want to grow and will help you determine what kind of resources or equipment you're going to need. I find the more time that I have in order to source this stuff, the more likely it is I'm going to be able to find a free or very cheap alternative. The first inspiration source I use is YouTube. YouTube is a great platform and there are plenty of channels, including mine, that take you through the different crops and how to grow them. The only caution I have for a platform like YouTube is that the creators are spread all across the world, from Australia to Canada and many countries in between. While the vast majority of the information that they share is absolutely great, some information is very, very dependent on exactly where you live. In order to figure out what those uh, variations are, you'll need to know what your growing zone is. In order to find this information, a quick Google search with your community's name and the term growing zone or plant hardiness zone behind it will find this information for you. The terms growing zone or plant hardiness zone are very similar and define the relationship between how the plant grows and its environment. So I'm in growing zone three, which means plants that are marked down for growing zone three will do very well in my garden. Whereas plants that are marked for say a warmer zone eight may not do so well. As we get into this series further, we'll talk about growing zones and how to work with them. But for now, just mark down your growing zone. Books are a great resource for information on gardening. Often they're able to spend more time to describe how to grow different crops across a variety of different growing zones. If you enjoy a good read, I'm going to suggest to you a couple of my favorite books to get you started. The best part is, this can often be free as most libraries have these books or very similar ones. I'm going to start with a book that I picked up when I first started gardening in my new home. This is Square Foot Gardening by Mel Bartholomew. It is a great book for a beginner gardener because it goes through all of the steps to get your first garden started. One of my favorite parts about this book 
is it teaches you how to space different crops to maximize the use of your garden space and get the most out of it. The second book that I highly recommend actually comes from Australia. It's called The One Minute Gardener. This book is filled with a ton of very easy to understand base level skills to help you grow a lot of food in small spaces. There are other books that I absolutely recommend. However, in order to not overwhelm you, I'll stop for now. A list of my recommended books can be found in the description below. Now it's time to watch some YouTube videos and read some fantastic books. But when you're doing that, make sure that you have a notebook handy. I found it very useful to keep a notebook handy to jot down notes especially on things that inspire me as I'm watching or reading, or crops that I want to grow. Ultimately, I write down anything that piques my interest. These notes end up making an excellent first list of crops to consider for your first growing season. My notebook has a list of what I grew and where in the garden from the past few years. This information becomes quite valuable in the future as it reminds me what went well and what did not, so that I can continue to improve. In the next episode in the Urban Gardening series, I will take a look at seed selection and when you can start your seedlings to get a head start on your season ahead. I hope that through the Urban Gardening series, both new and experienced gardeners are able to have the best harvests without having to invest a lot. Especially for new gardeners, a successful first season will want to make you come back for more. If you are a newer aspiring gardener or a veteran green thumb, I would love to hear your gardening questions. I will do my best to respond to all of the questions and who knows, your question may be featured on a future video. The best way to get a hold of me is through the YouTube comment section below the videos and on my Facebook page where I not only share my videos, but a lot more of my garden adventures.